Case two is a 35 year old man skin excision. And now you tell me the history because it's, I didn't want to give it away. Take the joy from you. All right. What's going on here? Um, so we have what's either here a large punch or um, a small excision. It's tri trisected. <clears throat> Sorry. And, um, we can see here is basically you have a, a large, um, you know, inflammatory infiltrate kind of, um, hugging the, the basically mid to superficial reticular dermis and papular, or papillary dermis. Um, and it looks like a lichenoid band, um, going across the top. And as we zoom in, we can notice that there are areas of what look like red pigment. Mm. Uh, like red, red pigment. Um, like there. Uh, like there. So large areas of, of red pigment with surrounding will look like mostly lymphocytes. Uh, or lymphocytes from what I can see here. And so kind of putting those two things together, this, this could be someone who had... Um, Basically, all sometimes with red pigment, particularly cinnabar, can cause like a pseudo lymphoma. Um, so this may be an excision of a pseudo lymphoma from um, the cinnabar in the red pigment uh, from a tattoo. Excellent. Yes, good description that we have an excision with a dense uh, infiltrate. Exactly as you said, a dense infiltrate in the superficial to mid dermis, somewhat going down into the deep dermis even a bit. And then uh, when you go closer, it's lymphocytes and also histiocytes. But the histiocytes here, see the, the cells with kind of grayish pink cytoplasm. Those are histiocytes and then a bunch of lymphs. But they're, they're kind of a diffuse uh, sheet. So kind of vaguely granulomatous, but not well-formed granulomas, right? Um, and then the key, of course, is recognizing the pigment here. And there's red pigment. And as you said, sometimes the red pigment is made from mer mercuric or uh, cinnabar. And that um, historically, at least, has tended to, to be more commonly a cause of inciting a tattoo reaction. And that's what this is. This is a really brisk tattoo reaction that's, that's really producing a kind of pseudo lymphomatous appearance. If you go over to the edge here, too, you can see it's not just red. There's black also. Yeah. And sometimes also this could even could even be like, I think sometimes green and black look very similar, like microscopically, like you can barely, some of the colors look a lot like black even when they're not. So recognizing the tattoo is very helpful. And I think this one I, I th thought is so dramatic because look, if you didn't, if you just had a shave and you didn't have the history, I mean, that looks for the, all the world like mycosis fungoides, doesn't it? I mean, it's tagging of lymphocytes, tons of lymphocytes along the basal layer with little halos around them. Um, you're, you're getting just tons and tons and there's a little sponge, but there are way more lymphs than you would want in the epidermis for a regular case of sponge derm. So, I mean that it really has dramatic to me, kind of, um, epidermotropism and tagging appearance, but clearly here, this was clinically limited to the site of the tattoo. And in this unfortunate case, the patient had such a brisk reaction, they ended up having to excise a decent portion of the tattoo as a staged excision, I think over, over several different specimens. Like, look at that though. I mean, it's like almost too good to be true for mycosis fungoides. It's so many lymphs in the epidermis. And, you know, um, so finding that uh, the pigment, the tattoo pigment is the key and then knowing the history. And in my experience, when I see tattoo reactions, I feel like most often they tend to look not this robust, maybe, but they tend to be like lymphocytic or lymphohistiocytic rather than well-formed granulomas. Now, there's some debate over that. Um, so when you see like a well-formed, like sarcoid looking granulomas in a tattoo, it's possible that it could be a, a sarcoidal type granulomatous reaction to the tattoo. But I think to me, more often, I think the case is that you're actually dealing with a patient with sarcoidosis that is having secondary involvement of the tattoo as part of the Kebner phenomenon and Kebnerization, you know, from the trauma of the tattoo. Of course, putting together the history uh, makes a difference there. Um, I also saw a case of tattoo reaction, interestingly, that was photo um, produced. It was, um, it was only when there was exposure to the sun and I looked it up and evidently that's a thing. Although I didn't know that was a thing. And I talked to several, uh, colleagues who had not heard that before, but it was interesting in that patient, they had multiple tattoos and only one of their tattoos, um, that they had had from a different tattoo, um, artist, um, only one of the tattoos actually, um, uh, flared up with a response to, to light and the other tattoos did not. So I assume probably a different, um, some different substance in the pigment. So that was a really fascinating, uh, case that I saw, 
uh, in the past. And then in addition to all of the epidermotropic appearance, look also that, that you're getting basically pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia, right? You're getting this glassy expansion, predominantly of the adnexal structures, right? But it, you could see how if you got a lot of that, you could start thinking about squamous cell carcinoma maybe a little bit, like up here, right? If you just got a shave on the top of that, this looks like the kind of PEH pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia appearance. Um, and of course, you can also get keratoic anthoma or keratoic anthoma-like lesions that arise in the setting of, you know, trauma and the setting of tattoos um, as well. So a variety of different features here. And if you're watching this video at home uh, on YouTube in the future, I will put a link to this digital slide um, in the video description so you can go explore it because it's really just a, it's like one of the most dramatic, exuberant examples of tattoo reaction I've seen. And I think the red ink can kind of be hard to recognize because from low power, it might you might think it looks like blood or you might think it looks like you know eosinophil granules, but it really is, once you go closer, you can tell, oh, this is tattoo. Look how much there is of it. Um, and then also, again, a lot of times, I don't know how many tattoos I've seen that are purely red. I feel like if you look around, a lot of times there will be at least some uh, darker color that is you know there as part of the lines of the tattoo. Um, so in any case, um, I, I don't know how common tattoo reactions actually are. Um, I, asked, I asked one of my friends, um, I have several friends who are tattoo artists, and the, one of them who's been doing it quite a while said he's never had a patient that he knows, or a, I'm sorry, not a patient, a client that he knows of uh, come back and complain about a tattoo reaction at least. So maybe these are, are really only a very small subset of people, I'm not sure. How often do you guys uh, see tattoo uh, reactions in, in your uh, clinic or practice? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so, so sometimes in pathology, we, we have a skewed sense because we see a bunch of stuff in study sets and we see things that, you know, we have in our collections um, and we have a skewed sense of like how common things are and things that we're like, oh, I see that every, you know, a couple times a year. It's because I'm seeing a whole bunch of biopsies from a bunch of different dermatologists who have seen way more patients and only biopsy a subset of those. So it kind of gives me a skewed sense of reality uh, here. But yeah, I just can't get over how dramatic the uh, lymphocytes and the epidermis are there. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Okay, that's your reaction.